Hi, I'm Bob Green, and uh, I've been with AMCs for years. We've re restored them, and my sons have restored them, and now we're down to my grandson, Ethan. Hey, I'm and, Ethan. Oh. and he's <laughs> he restored this one. This car has a story. It was pulled out of AMC Randall parking lot, or back lot, and it had been wrecked. And around, we guess, about 1978, and it stayed there till about 20 years ago. And it had been picked over, but the car is blue on blue, part of great colors, and it had some nice options. So we decided to buy it, Mike offered it to us because they were clearing the property because they had sold the building so we drug it home and took it apart and for 20 years we've been dabbling with it one way and another and <clears throat> it got painted but we had to be repainted and we we thank shannon down at, at shire's customs for the beautiful job that he did with the metal and the and the paint he's just a wizard and he brought this brought the body back to life so we started stacking stuff on the body and everything was done with ethan's hands it's just with grandpa in a chair in the background <clears throat> all right so this is a uh, a 390 car it has an automatic transmission air conditioning tilt wheel rally pack and go pack <clears throat> so it's a fully loaded amc car and we just had to do it <laughs> definitely and so we just did it through ethan who's who's got a car of his own and he's going to do it next and he's gotten really good for for a 17 year old kid he did really really good 18 years old now and he just turned 18 so <laughs> now he's 18. happy birthday thank you <laughs> well, let's get this open <clears throat> Um, this right. is a uh, 390 four barrel. Uh, everything in here is factory correct. Uh, I've done all the research to make sure that every nut and bolt is the correct color that came out of the factory. Uh, spent many hours, a lot of time, just trying to get the exact color that I could. Um, this car is truly a one of a kind car. Um, and it's now going to an owner who is for sure person who should own it. Go pack uh, is a, a posi rear end. It's got Ram air, 140 speedo, a t tilt wheel, uh, power disc brakes. And um, that's pretty much it for that. That's just like the upgraded interior, uh, upgraded gauges. The har hardest part to find on this in the engine bay is the uh, actually the rally pack oil gauge. Uh, stuff uh the reason is is because that was a pretty much a dealership installation type thing it's where they put uh gauges in the dash um they they punched out the dash they what they did was there's little circles in the dash and uh the plastic piece and they would punch that out and they would get a new bezel with it uh which also had the holes for the gauges they would also get those gauges uh which is a oil gauge, there's a uh, amp gauge, a vacuum gauge, and uh, a temp gauge. Well, the color of this car, it's Commodore blue metallic. It's uh, also a blue interior, meaning it's a double blue car. Yes, so this is a, pr this is a pretty rare uh, color scheme for this, this car specifically. Um, the interior I did, I restored the interior in this car. Um, yeah. Thank you. It's, it's a very beautiful color. I love this color. Um, door panels, I, I hung these. I fabricated the holes for them, really? made sure that they would fit. And I've got the spacing correct. Um, nice. Got the correct hardware for it with the collars. Um, so was it fun working with your grandpa on this car? There were some times where it was like, <laughs> it was like, kind of like you want to throw a wrench through the garage door because, 
because not every restoration goes easy um because not every part fits the same right um but yes going through this car it was fun i learned a lot about these cars especially like the manufacturing process Th these were just throwaway cars in the eyes of the manufacturer which meant not everything was put together with extreme care not put together where it was precise right it's it's really just primitive so yes there was there was times where i got angry <laughs> but uh yeah it was it was pretty fun doing this car especially seeing the way it turned out yeah. for yeah. sure Is this the first car you did? Yep. This to is that extent? Mm hmm Oh, well, this is my first car restored. Yeah. So, um, actually, my first car was a 67 Rambler Post car, uh, 199, three on the tree. Uh, had that for a while, and then I had an accident, uh, hit and run. And so, I've been on the lookout for uh, another Rambler, actually. Got myself a, an upgrade from that one. Uh, it's uh, also a 67, but it's a, a two-door two hardtop, uh, 294-speed four-barrel car. It's a 440 instead of Rogue as well. Yeah, that's Alrighty. Back here, um, this paint right here is factory so this is called spackle paint the blue um it's a i believe what we got it out of was a uh, a chevy uh spackle paint there's different types different like like uh flow patterns and stuff like that for the paint but we want to make sure who's correct so we, the chevy was the closest if not the same thing um along with the mat we made sure we got another mat so it would be correct that always goes out by the way it gets hot in here <laughs> um so this all started the first thing i did besides the starter solenoid that was the first part i put on this car is i did the wiring all throughout this car i uh made sure that it went through the right holes i started from the back went forward um pushed it through the rocker molding up and where the interior part is the first part where the kick panel is and uh Man, that was a pain. There's a certain hole you have to get in into, and that's that's uh, not the easiest job, but got it correct, like always. You have to do that. Hi, I'm Mark Fletcher, and I happen to be the current owner of this AMX. I was with Bob 20 years ago, and Mike Randall called up and said that the car was available, and it, the Green family did a lot of the restoration, and then about a year and a half, two years ago, we talked about it getting finished up by me having ownership. But the agreement of me buying the car was that the Greens had to finish it. And Ethan stepped up and said, I'll do the work, Grandpa will be the brains, and we'll get the car done. And so today, we're almost done with the car. And the reason why I'm taking it home today is because Ethan has a next step in his life. He's already started. And so not just the car, but what are you doing next, Ethan? Um, I've got a scrambler at home, my grandpa's scrambler. And yep. I also have, a, uh, as I already talked about, the 67 294 speed four barrel car at home. What are you going to do for a profession? What are you going to school oh, yeah. for? Um, aviation. I'm in for an AMP. I'm about to get my general. Um, after that, I'm going to get my A. And then soon after that, I'll get my P. So the same mechanical aptitude that he's shown on this car he's able to take on further into what his career will be like his grandfather and his father That's and awesome. uncles has done so uh, there's a lot of tradition in the green family i'm proud to be a, a friend of theirs for half of my lifetime <laughs> so with that we had the question come up about randall so mike randall is a gentleman that i know and in uh in the muscle car world, there's the Yanko and there's uh, Shelby and so on that took cars and customized them and it made them better in order to make more performance outside of the corporate requirement. And Mike Randall did that 
uh, for performance cars, and it wasn't just Mike. He was young. Uh, he was young when he started, but Skip and Grant, his uh, uncle and father, owned the Randall AMC dealer, Rambler dealer here in Mesa, Arizona. And so I first met him when I owned a Rambler Scrambler that turned out to be driven by Jackie Randall, Mike's wife, until she got so uh, until she got large enough as pregnant that she needed a car with a tilt wheel and they moved her to a rebel machine. So my Beast King Scrambler was from the Randall family and through that I got to know them. Well, Mike called us in 2004 and asked us if we would uh, get this into the right hands so it would get restored. I had other projects so Bob uh, took it on in the family. But the Randall AMC is also known for putting 401 V8s in Gremlins of which Mike did 21 against the, the best wishes of the ownership of the business, but he would remove the 304, hit it with a couple of sledgehammers in the right spot so the exhaust would clear, and put in 401s in 20, 21 Gremlins, of which a few still survive, and I know of one over in California, an all-black one that a friend of mine owns. But So Randall is like a Yanko. Now this car was not high performance equipped by Randall, but it was sold by them new uh, to a woman who special ordered it, and then she traded it in for a more economical car later in the 70s when it had a little damage, and it never has been seen, really, publicly until today. And that's because the Green family and Ethan have finished that project. So to finish the project, Ethan, here's the last payment I owe you Thank for you. putting that together. Hey, yes. he still takes a check, anyway. <laughs> but the bottom line is, uh, this call will come home, I'll do the final finishing up. So I've restored cars on my own before, but I can do the final finishing up. Bob comes to California often. If I need help, they'll be there to help us as well. Um, but I don't believe there's a Green family member that doesn't have at least some blood on this car over the years. And, oh, you and that's an important part. I got a lot part. of my blood on Pardon? this car. I know you do. <laughs> I, know, I know that Aaron and Angel do. I know that your mother and your father do, and I know that his blood is hidden underneath in signature. So, Anyway, I want to thank you for for uh, you. showing interest in the story. To me, it's really important what he's achieved as a young man, and I hope Absolutely. it carries him through 
every endeavor he takes on from now on. And I hope you call us when your other ones are done. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> Thank you.